Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to install Windows 10 on ARM on SSD for our Raspberry Pi 3. So let's get started. <laughs> So before I get into this tutorial, I do want to mention one thing and answer a couple of questions. One, MCCI, the creators of the USB drivers, they actually have this huge project that's in New York City where they are spreading internet through LoRa on, in New York City. Now, if you are interested, please check out their website and consider donating to their cause. Can this work on other devices like the Pine64 or the Tinkerboard or whatever devices you guys have in mind? The short answer is no. One is because it does require a UEFI boot BIOS to boot natively into this Windows on ARM, which those other devices don't have, not yet at least. Then even if you do create the UEFI to boot into Windows 10, you also need somebody to create all the drivers to get everything working. So for that question, can you run it on other devices? Not yet. And with those couple of things out of the way, uh, let's get started on this tutorial. Now this isn't a full on how to install Windows 10 on our Raspberry Pi. So you're gonna have to watch my previous video in tandem to know what I'm talking about. So remember last week when we downloaded the zip file, the driver zip file, well, we're going to need to open that up and modify some files in there just to allow the boot from SSD. So first thing is open up the zip file and I use 7-zip. If you're not using 7-zip and you're using Windows zip, you're probably going to have to extract the entire thing, modify the file and zip it back up. But we will just download 7-zip. I'm going to open the archive and head into the driver file. Now I'm going to pull up the folder called driver DRV. And in there you see MCCI and there's two INF files. Those are the two files that you're going to have to modify. Now on the first one, I'm just going to hit edit and scroll down all the way to the bottom and you see where it says start type. Change that over to zero and save it. And you're done with that one file. Same goes for the next file. You're going to have to edit, scroll all the way to the bottom, change the start type from three to zero and save that as well. And you're basically done. Now you just progress into loading this driver pack into your SSD like you would with the SD card. Just change your drive to your SSD or to your USB drive. Second thing you need from this whole installation is a blank SD card. So you're going to need an SD card, use SD formatter or something and format it to FAT32 and it's got to be blank. We need this to be our swap disk. Basically, you can't run the swap disk off the SSD because of the whole USB drive thing. It's, it's annoying, but this is how it's got to be. And Raspberry Pi without a swap is basically unusable. So we do need the SD card to be blank so we could create a swap partition on that drive. Third thing what you need is if you have a brand new Raspberry Pi, it's probably not able to boot into USB mode. You're going to have to set the program mode to allow it to boot USB. And I do have a tutorial on that, which I'll link in the card up here on how to do that. And I also have a web link, like a blog post, a write up on how to do this exact same thing. So I'll leave it in the description below. One of the things I forgot to mention that we have to set is max USB current equals one on our config.txt file in the boot partition of the SSD drive. This way it will allow us to keep running more power through the USB when it boots up. Once you have those three elements in, you basically follow my previous tutorial as far as the BIOS. Just remember to set the boot order to the USB instead of the SD card. And that's it, you're, you're basically done. It's gonna boot right into the SSD. Well, once you're done booting it up, one of the things you wanna check is your SD card to see if it has space taken up because it will automatically create the swap disk on there. If not, you're probably gonna to have to go through the settings where you modify the page file and point it to that drive, but it should automatically have done this. Now, here's a crystal disk example of the difference between running USB and running SD card. And you're gonna notice that the SSD is about double the speed of the SD card, which is great, but still at 20 megabytes per second, it's still not fast for an operating system. Remember back in the day when we had to run uh, our hard drives, the, the mechanical hard drives at 33 megabytes per second, you know, through IDE? Yeah, it's gonna feel like that. Anyway, now with this type of setup, I feel a lot more confident. The USB driver has been working great. I haven't had any issues with my USB dropping or anything like that. I do have to disable sleep and the power mode because if you don't, it kind of crashes your computer after you leave it idle. Otherwise, it's been running fine. I've been able to test some stuff and there's this amazing project that I, I didn't even like somebody on my discord actually mentioned it where he turned this Windows 10 into a Steam downloader. And I was like, what's a Steam downloader? He basically 
he has a write-up and a tutorial which I'll link in the description below but he basically runs Steam CMD which is Steam Command and download all the games that he owns onto this Raspberry Pi and you're like on a 5 10 watt machine it's 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 ingenious imagine you have to pay for internet where you only got limited bandwidth but you want to download a game that's like 40 gigs and you could basically take this guy to like a Starbucks and have it automatically download it's it's pretty cool one of the things that I didn't mention that you might have seen on the thumbnail is the three and a half inch screen that I plugged into this guy. That was only really for the thumbnail. Does it really work very well? No, it, it, it doesn't. It's it's just like you could barely read anything on there. Uh, does touchscreen work? No, because the GPIOs, I don't, we don't have the software to run the GPIOs with the touch coordinates and stuff like that. So yeah, no, the touchscreen doesn't work. It's really just for display and you can't even read it at that. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. And also, I will try to keep you guys up to date as far as what's going on with Windows 10 on Raspberry Pi. More the major updates, but yeah, I'll keep you guys up to date on that. I'll leave all the links to the thread that we basically stay on just to see what's going on with this. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.